and welcome back to Hold and Modify. Yes, YouTube's most poorly produced, underproduced Amiga channel, and today we are in another Lightwave video, but this is really not about showing Lightwave stuff. This is more about covering a topic that seems to come up a lot, which is once you've rendered your animation in frames, how to compile it into an Amiga animation format that you can actually view and show off to your friends and family, right? So what we have here is one of... Uh, my little scenes I created. This is, I love Tron. I don't know if you all remember the movie Tron. Some of you who watch this, uh, I'm sure you remember Tron, but uh, I had a really, really crazy obsession with Tron. And as you can see here, this is a light cycle sitting on some, uh, like a, a dealer display platform with some ropes around it. I thought I was being cute when I made this. Yeah, so. That's all it is. And I, I call this Tron Ad. That's the name of the scene file. <laughs> but it's just this light cycle sitting on the... Uh, okay, well, I'm doing it again. Instead of just trying to tell you about it, I need to actually show it to you, right? So here we go. Render the light cycle. It's on this little platform here, surrounded by the ropes, as I said. And uh, here we'll get a good look at it so you can see what's doing. The camera drops down from the ceiling to the ground. And there you go. Look at that. Oh, it's, that's just, that's so clever, Q. I'm sure this is great. So, what are we to do with this? So, I've already rendered this out, okay? I did uh, 320 by 240, which is a very friendly Amiga format. I mean, if you want, you know, if you want to know more about this light cycle scene, by all means, leave comments below, and I'll answer them. I, I try to answer all those comments down there. You folks uh, often have some amazing comments. So, yeah, if you want any more uh, information about this scene, I mean, you can see it here. This is a light cycle uh, object. There's a, a floor, fan blade, the stand, and then the light cycle here in the middle. And how many polygons is this? This is a pretty... I actually modeled all this stuff. I know I don't talk about modeling often because I don't like doing it. And this was older Q. Well, no, younger Q. Uh, older in time. Uh, further back in time is the word I'm looking for. That polygon count is 4,585. There you go, 4,585, isn't that great? So we've, we've rendered this out. So let's get out of here. And I'm gonna go ahead and click through this and probably forget a lot of the steps, which is why I'm making this video. Okay, so let's get this into Ad Pro. Now, one of the things you're gonna wanna do is you need to make sure that you've got RexMast running, okay? It's in system, RexMast. I have this added to my startup, so it's always running, but it's a scripting language that uh, Fred, uh, over here, Fred, hello Fred, uh, and uh, Ad Pro will need. Now, important tip, uh, when you're saving out your frames from Lightwave or whatever 3D package you're using, if you're gonna be using Ad Pro and Fred, I'm a big fan of the software. It, it's, it's slick, it's fast, it's you know pretty intuitive, but unfortunately it does not support TGA files. Uh, it seems ridiculous considering how much it actually does support, but see here, these TJs, it does not support TGA files. So I go ahead and just convert these to JPEG, uh, <coughs> uh, cheating by going back to Windows to convert those to JPEG, because I forgot to render out JPEGs from Lightwave. <coughs> <coughs> so we're going to go ahead and uh, just check out this image in Ad Pro. So there it is. There's the render. So yeah, it looks good. It's working. So th that was just to look how it's going to, you know, give you guys an example of what it's going to look like. We got to go back over to uh, Fred. Okay, Fred is where all the magic happens. So we're going to go new, and we're going to go up to, now I have videos, by the way, I have videos on how to use Fred and Ad Pro. So just go through my channel, you can search keywords, Ad Pro, Fred, you know, making animations, or just, I don't have that many videos, like 150 or so, I don't know. Uh, and you can find my Fred uh, add pro videos where I kind of deep dive into all of this. But right now I'm just kind of just blitzing through this because I've, I've made those videos and you can go back and check them out. So let's go here and show the process. So what we want to do is find where those images are at. And there's Tron add JPEG folder. I'm just going to say, boom, go. Loads them all in. Now you just see all this black frame. You're like, well, what's going on? Why is it all black? That sucks. <laughs> so if you really want to see the frames, okay, what you can do is select all, and then go up to scripts process, not scripts process queue, you're jumping ahead. Go up to make stamp under animation. And what this is gonna do is go through and just create this like 16 color 
thumbnail for every single frame. And yeah, this is going to take up some space on your Amiga's hard drive, and it's going to take some time. But, you know, it makes it look fancier, and you can kind of see what's going on. And the cool thing is you can actually play this little tiny thumbnail uh, in real time, and you kind of get like a like a mini animation before you've even made your animation, right? So that's pretty slick. Let's go ahead and let this finish. All right, so now it's done. And if you scroll through here, you can kind of see it trying to play it as I scrub it. You can actually go up here and say playback and just say play once. Look at that. There you go, a little sneak peek. A little sneak peek of the animation. It's so tiny. It's so cute. All right, so we're going to do the select all. We're going to go to process. And now we're going to make this into an Amiga animation file. Now, the resolution is 7... No, this is 320 by 240. Okay, that's right. I almost screwed that way up. That would have been a real uh, problem. So, but these are PNGs. So, the first thing we need to do, okay, you can render them as ham and then save them into a, 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 an animation format, like, you know, Amiga Anim, but you got to actually render them. So, we're going to render as ham, and then we're going to click up here and go to Savers. We're going to save as an Anim. Save as Anim right there. See? Yay. That's it. That's your that's your script. So it's three, it's already where you know it's 320 by 240. So that's fine. Don't have to you know do any scaling. Click process. It's gonna take you right over to uh, this is where the whole AREX thing comes into play. Now Fred is talking to art department professional through AREX. And it's like, oh, you, you want to do something. So we know it's low res, so we'll go accept. Overscan, um, yeah. I'm going to go ahead and say yes for now. It's NTSC, yes. Is it interlaced? Well, it's 320 by 240, so no, it's not interlaced. I'm going to go yes for the vertical overscan. I'm going to do ham 8 because we love ham 8 here. We're going to do Floyd dithering because, you know, Floyd looks awesome. And now for the animation, this is where you're going to save the animation file. So go back to work. Go back to Lightwave, go to Anims, and we'll call this Tron Add.Anim. It's going to wrap up automatically. Yes, lock the palette. Uh, I do usually advise this. When you're working in high color formats like Ham 8 or higher, yeah, this, this is fine. You can lock it. I never understand what this is. I, I still need to Google this, or maybe someone in the comments could please leave a comment that says, Q, this is what this means. This is what these different things do. I don't know. Bite word long? I, I still don't know what this means. So I just click bite because it's the first thing. You know, anim optimization. Do you want a smaller file size or faster compression? I'll go for smaller file size. And here it goes. It just starts going through. And through AREX, Fred and our department start talking to each other. And it starts making your anim file. Now, I still have not uh, downloaded an animation player for the Amiga that can handle weird resolutions. Uh, the, the view program that comes with Art Department really only ever seems to want to play basic Amiga animation uh, resolutions like 320 by 240, um, 720 by 480, and so on. Uh, Directory Opus can play anim files, but it tends to freak out sometimes as well. I, I noticed this seems to be more a problem with Ham 8 animations than regular Ham or 16 color or 32 color animations. So I'm gonna I'm building this animation right now, and we'll see if we can play it with View or Directory Opus because that's all I have right now. I could try and load it into Deluxe Paint 4 because it does load animations, obviously, and it can handle Ham 8. So let's see what happens here while this builds. Okay, so we are good to go. We can go ahead and quit. You could save it if you want. You know, it's. It's, now, keep in mind, if you don't save this, you don't lose these thumbnails. These thumbnails are actually little tiny image files that live alongside your rendered frames. So they're always there. And Fred will automatically detect them and show them. So even if you don't save, you're still going to have those there if you want. And you can quit Add Pro as well. So here we go. We go to View. And we go to our little uh, amazing View program that comes with Art Department Professional. We go to the Anim folder. There's the Tron Add. And uh, crush fingers, I don't know. Hey, look at that. It worked. So I did render this at 320 by 240, so I, I was actually uh, suspecting that this would work in view. But there it is. There's the lovely Tron animation. Now, you're seeing some wackiness here at the start. Look at that. There's like some weird pixel blobby junkiness. This is what it looks like with a locked palette. 
and that first frame, those first frames look kind of weird. The rest of the frames look okay, but the eh, first frame looks a little weird. So let's go ahead and try this again, and practice makes perfect. Now you're probably saying, well, Q, you, uh, <laughs> why didn't you uh, save the project in Fred? What, you're going to have to do this. Well, you know what? You're watching this, and we're just going to go through it again, and this is how you will learn, because the more you keep watching it, then the more you learn, right? So the, or the easier you will learn, he said to himself. Okay, so renders, Trana, JPEG, boom. Now, see what I said about the thumbnails? There you go. Look at that. It, it, you know, Fred automatically recognizes the thumbnails, and there you go. You've already got your thumbnails. So we're going to go ahead and say select all, and this time process scripts. And, of course, I you know, didn't save it. Now, look, you can even save the script. You can even save those script lists here, load list, save list as. But, yes, I'm going to have to go ahead and do it again. Uh, render as ham, add, parent, savers, render as anim, process. We're going to do low res, overscan, NTSC, non interlaced, overscan, ham8, floyd, and we're going to call it, ooh, what are we going to call it? We're going to call it something different because we don't want to mess up the one we already did, right? So, uh, Tron add two dot anim. Okay, we're gonna wrap it up automatically. We're gonna just have the palette be unlocked now. We do byte, smaller file size, and here we go once again. So the difference between this time now, we're gonna look at what a unlocked palette looks like versus a locked. Again, because we're using a high color mode like Cam 8, I'm kind of hoping this looks better but we're going to find out and you can always scrub the video back and look at the other one to see if it does look better or not. Okay, it's done once again. Let's go ahead and quit and save then close untitled sequence. Sure, fine, save it. Okay, well let's fire up view. Go to our lovely DH2 Anims Tron Anim 2 and whoa. Well, this is interesting. It's you, you, you folks are seeing what I'm seeing, right? It's starting. Oh my gosh, it's like doing some kind of weird flippity floppity. Oh my gosh. Well, uh, so and now it's it's flashing, there's like flashing happening. So, ham eight is a high color mode and it does have a pretty big palette, but unlocking the palette, as you can see here, and now please ignore the weird why the animation is like popping from front to back and not playing smoothly it's like kind of like doing some kind of weird i don't know 80 style max headroom editing of the footage here uh look you can see that there's like this there's flickering there's this strobing happening almost every other frame so yeah you're going to want to lock the palette with ham8 because otherwise it's going to look even worse and i don't know why it's freaking out and why it, it did that but we could go to directory opus here and have it tell it there's no disk present. Um, let's go to Amiga stuff and let's look at the uh, let's look at the frames here. Renders, Tronad, JPEG. So you know I'm wondering. I'm wondering if well no that's it. They're in order. Frame zero through. By the way, these STP files those are the stamp files that Fred shows you the little preview files. So you can delete all the stamp files if you want. I'm not really sure why. Uh, that version, we, you, know, I showed you the steps just like I did before, and there was no problems. I'm not sure what's going on with uh, that animation. Why it's jumping around like that? Let's try again. It could be view. Let's go ahead and try and play this animation with Art Department Professional. Art Department Professional. Let's try and play it with Dopus. Okay. So nope. Woo woo. Yeah. There's like, it's something weird going on. Not sure why that's happening. Anyway, that's not the point of this video. You saw the first one. It played fine. In fact, if we go back to, uh, uh, you know, Lightwave, where I saved it accidentally. So this one, this one plays properly, and it looks better in the end. As you can see there, um, lock the palette, even with Ham 8, lock the palette. I mean, Directory Opus, unfortunately, can't play at full speed for some reason. I don't know why, but... As you can see, actually, the fact that Directory Opus is playing slower allows you to examine these frames more closely. 
And as you can see, this actually does a better job of playing back than even View does as far as image quality goes. There's not all that weird artifacting. And I thought that artifacting might have been ham artifacting from the palette. Well, guess what? It wasn't. So everything I just showed you for the last six minutes is a complete waste of time. I'm sorry. This is ham 8 locked palette. It looks great. There's no weird flickery, shimmery stuff going on. Uh, unfortunately, again, you know, Directory Opus just can't play it at full speed. But there you go. That's how you make an animation file using Ad Pro and Fred. And yes, you need you need frames, and they better not be TGAs because it's not going to work. You want to do uh, just stick to JPEGs or IFFs. Those are always those are always uh, you know a good way to go. Well, I think that's it. I hope this made sense to you. I I I really do. I guess uh, thanks for watching and uh. I don't know. I'm done with this video. <laughs>